Hey guys, and welcome to a new Let's Play. This is Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020. Um, I'm going to be doing this alongside my FHM 7 series with the Bruins. And this is actually a series that I did uh, last year sometime. Um, but it sort of stagnated on me. And, and, and looking back and, and thinking about it, I, I think I realized why it stagnated on me. And I made some adjustments this time to, to hopefully allow me to, to play through it because I really enjoy this game. It's a lot of fun. Um, so for those of you who have played this game before, you have the ability when you start, when you create your coach to set up his attributes, his offensive, his defensive, his recruiting, his scouting, and his player development. And the way I set this up before was I had set every one of my skills at at, at, a, at a one, basically, to sort of work myself up from the very bottom and, and see how we could do. And, and while that's fun in theory, um, I had a really difficult time recruiting with a, a recruiting skill of one. So I really wasn't able to... Uh, sign any recruits until, and I played it offline for, uh, I don't know, a handful of seasons afterwards. I really wasn't able to do any sort of consistent recruiting until like year seven or eight. Uh, and I just, I didn't want that to happen this time. I want to be able to go after recruits and, and actually have a shot at getting some of them. So what I did was I set up um, the max skill for all my skills at 100. I started each of them at one, and then I just used a randomizer to give me random starting numbers for each one of my skills. So the first one, offensive skills, uh, was rated at like a 21. Defensive skills, I got a little bit lucky. I was at an 81. Recruiting, I want to say, was at like a 46. I don't know if it'll come up here if I hover over it. No. Recruiting was at a 46. Development was at like a 60. And then scouting was at a 20-something. So hopefully this gives me a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more ability in, in the recruiting side of things. And, and we can actually play this game as in-depth as it is. And it's fairly in-depth. Uh, I do have this set up as a promotion relegation league. Um, so I'm starting off in, I think it's region or conference S, I think is what I'm starting out as. And essentially you have to either win the conference tournament or you have to finish in the top three of your conference. And if you do that, you move up to the next conference. So we're in S looking to get up to A and we're, I'm probably going to do these seasons as just two episodes. So the first episode will probably be the beginning of the season through like January 1st. And then the second episode will be uh, January 2nd through the off season. Or I might go to yeah, episode one, might go to the conference tournament. And then episode two might be the conference tournament, the postseason tournaments, if there are any um, awards and, and sort of the off season recruiting and player transfers and, and that sort of thing. So I'm not going to go a ton in depth into each of the players because, you know, these guys are going to be gone, um, especially within the first couple seasons, because if you look at my roster, I have um, quite a few seniors, one, two, three, four, I have five seniors. One of them is not going to play much, but three of my top four players are all seniors. So it's going to be a challenge after this season. So we're going to play through, like I said, probably the first, I think what I'll probably do is play that first season up to conference tournament time. And then that second episode will be conference tournament, postseason tournament, off season uh, into the beginning of the next season. Um, so this game is super in depth, uh, especially the recruiting portion of it, which we'll kind of run through here in a second. Um, if we go to our inbox, um, top recruiting uh, team, uh, rankings from the previous season. Let's see, do I show up on here? Right there at 150th. So right, basically smack dab. Well, I guess a little bit higher than average, which is good. Um, I don't want to skip summer. You have the ability to, to purchase scouting reports and that will give you some information about players in your area. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. You can purchase nationwide, European. I'll show you all that in a minute. 
My budget is $82,000 that I can spend on recruiting tools. Uh, and I have four scholarships open for next season. So we have the ability to uh, do some stuff with our team. So if we advance, so you have the ability here to buy um, any of the uh, scouting reports that you want. You can see the Gold Star Edition contains basic information plus player rankings, ranking by position, one through five star ratings, and top school preferences. Basic just contains a list of the top 200 seniors uh, with info on interest in your school. So right now our, our budget isn't that high. I don't want to spend nearly half of it on a Gold Star Edition Um Scouting report, although that would be nice. I'm going to start with just the basic edition in the Atlantic East. Um, I'm thinking, I, when I was playing through this before, I found myself going after a lot of international uh, recruits. Um, I'm thinking about looking into this next season, um, but we'll see what happens. So the national report, though, might be interesting. The national report... The issue is that none of those none of those top recruits are going to have any interest in my school. So I'm not going to deal with any of that right now. We, we need to focus on, on the Atlantic East. So we're going to go with just the uh, – we're just going to purchase this um, scouting report, and that will let us spend more money on the actual recruiting. So if we advance, we got an email. Summer s travel schedule. So these are the um, the camps that I can go look at. Um, let's see what the AI suggests. The AI suggests that I go to all three of the regional camps. I don't think I'm going to do that because I don't think we're going to have um, a ton of interest from players in these markets. Um, top 100 players in the Atlanta. Yeah, I don't want to spend a ton of my money on areas. Maybe we'll do one of the other ones. A favorite camp. Best prospects in the West. It's Great Plains. Let's do. Let's do Chicago. Uh, that way, I can get some Midwest information too. We'll, we'll go with those two. I think that's probably a good idea. Sometimes the actual processing takes a little bit longer than I would like, but. That's all part of the game. There's a lot going on. There are a lot of recruits. There's a lot of information. So sometimes the the load screens take a little bit longer than uh, than than I would like, but that's okay. And we are going to get to the team here in a second. I just wanted to get through some of that basic stuff. So recruiting has begun. So before we go to recruiting, let's take a look at our roster because this is we're going to need to figure out where we're going to need to recruit or what positions we're going to need to recruit. So John Howe is our starting shooting guard. He's a senior. Uh, if we look, actually, let's go by position. So point guard, Llewellyn Barkley is a freshman. Phil Carter and Greg Kamauna. So it wouldn't might not be a bad idea to to look at a point guard uh, to go along with Barkley. Shooting guard, we have a senior and a couple of juniors, so we're pretty loaded there. Uh, but it might not be a bad idea to find a young. Uh, young shooting guard because these guys are all going to be gone by next year. Small forward, we've got a pretty solid, we got a couple of decent freshmen, although Angeli is by far the better of the two. So we're probably okay at small forward. Uh, power forward, again, we've got a two and a half star, Juan Laven. Uh, but our two top power forwards are both seniors, so we're probably going to need a power forward. And then center, Jeff Anthony, is gone after this year. Calvin Webb is only a sophomore. So I think shooting guard, um, I think, yeah, shooting guard, small forward is probably where we're going to be looking. And then from there, we fill it in with whatever we can find. We'll need a, a couple of backup big men, I think, as well. So really, I think, if we can find one, it, well, we can only have four. So shooting guard, small forward, and then a big man, either a power forward or a center, and a point guard, I think is probably the way to go. So recruiting. And this is super in-depth. So 
hit lists, and and this is every recruit in the country. Um, no, actually, this is just the Atlantic East. Uh, so you can look at each region individually. You can look at recruits that are on your call list or your watch list. You can look at only committed or available recruits. Um, you can show high school and JUCO or hide them. You can search by position, and you can show uh, any sort of level recruit. So the way I like to do it first is I like to go by interested recruits because I want to see who's interested in my in my club. Those are generally the easiest people to to sign. Now none of them are all that good. Brian Darden isn't that bad. He's a potential two star recruit. So we will add him to the watch list and the call list. And the call list is just that. It's what will allow you to call that uh, call that recruit and and make a pitch. So we're going to watch some film on him as well to try to get some information. You can see we don't have any information on him other than his stats. Um, and then if we dial, you have the ability to pitch particular areas. And a lot of this off the bat is going to be based off of your recruiting skills. So hopefully he'll talk to me here a little bit. So we're going to go with playing time first. Yeah, and you can see I lost my connection. So we'll go back and we'll try it again. And you can see playing time is going to factor into my decision, but it is only one of the things I'm considering. So now you can look at some of the other ones. Uh, let's look at location. He's done talking to me. All right, so I can go back and talk to him again if I want, but now I at least have some information about playing time. Um, so as we get further into recruiting, uh, when I am able to visit the recruit, I can talk to him about whatever... Um, whatever of these things are most important to him, and hopefully that will um, lead him to agreeing to come to us. So once I've done that, I'm not... I mean, his numbers aren't bad, um, but I'm not crazy about... You know, we'll watch film on him. We'll watch film on all these guys just to kind of get an idea, and maybe these ratings will change. I'm not too keen on on any of them really. Although Melson's numbers, his stats aren't bad. Um, <clears throat> he's the 1500th rated or 1429th, I guess, rated player in in the country. So we'll keep an eye on him, but I'm not gonna uh, not gonna go too much more in depth into them than there. So if we look at the full recruit, actually, let me. Is there anybody across the country? <clears throat> Excuse me. Have some coffee here real quick. I want to see if there's anybody nationwide that's interested in us. My guess would be no. These first couple of years, you tend to have to focus on home. But that doesn't mean you can't find people who are interested. You just need to take the time to, to talk to them and recruit them. So we'll see what happens when this loads, if it loads. Again, there's just, there are so, yeah, it's just those four. Okay, all right, so let's go back to Atlantic East and look at the full recruit list. And let's see what's here that we have a legit shot at. I mean, the number one, uh, I mean, these five-star and four-star guys are unlikely. Um, yeah, they all say they have no interest. So what I want to look for is, is, I think, I think you can look at, if we go to all regions, I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to pay much attention to the people that currently say they have no interest in us. I think what I'm going to do is take a look at the guys and you'll see there are question marks that show up, which means we don't know if they have any interest. So I think what I'm going to do is that, but I'm not going to look at the five or the four star recruits. Let's start with three star recruits. I think that's probably our best strategy not to go after the top guys because I think we'll just waste our breath with those guys right now. So let's see what we can get from three star. Actually, what I probably should have done was this mid-level recruit. I think that's what I'll switch to. <clears throat> once this loads. So we go to mid-level recruits. 
And I don't necessarily want to go after and, and sign four people right away because in the off season we've got the transfer portal and you can find some really solid players in the transfer portal. So, all right. So we got a bunch of three-star recruits. So we decided that we wanted shooting guard and small forward. We're going to be kind of our two big, uh, our two big targets. So you can see Matthew Attenborough. Right away, I go towards the the international guys. So we'll watch film there. Jim Marion, Dan Dillard. Let's look for some other. N Let's go after Eric Nicholas. So we want some. Obviously, we want to go after some non-international um, players as well. Uh, we do need a big man. Uh, I like Rodney Boyce. I like that stat line. Now, it, what this will tell me as we advance, it'll tell me if they have any interest, um, and if it's and and if it if it says none then i'll probably move on to somebody else um but it's entirely possible that it may come back with cool interest or something like that and in that case um you know that's when we really can start digging into the actual recruiting and you get um the ability to watch film on 10 people uh a, a section or a time i guess um Italy. I can't watch film on any more of these guys this round, but that's fine. All right, so I'll start there. So that's 10 three-star recruits that I'm looking at, and we will just advance. And usually it's a week at a time that that the um, – that the uh, – that you can go back and you can look at more film. Let's look at our inbox, national camps. All right, we got the national camps. So if we look at recruiting again, let's see. Yeah, so you can see I, I now have the ability to watch film on 10 guys again. So let's let's look at the call list and see if any of those guys are now expressing any interest at all in our club. Yeah, we got a couple. So we got one. Out of that list, we got one. We got Jim Marion. So we're going to watch film on Jim Marion again. And let's talk to him. And let's see what we can get out of him. He's got to run and grab something to eat. All right, well, that didn't work. All right, so let's try that again. We're going to give him another call. Let's see if we can get him to... And you can see we got time remaining up here. So doesn't have anything to say about it. Playing time is not a big concern to him. He's got it. Okay. So at least I got some information. I know that that that's not um, that playing time is not a big a big thing to him. Eventually, if we show up in one of his top ten schools, it'll show up here. Um, so let's go back to uh, the full recruit list, mid level recruits, and we're gonna do that again. And I'll do this a couple more times. And I'm probably just gonna sim ahead here. Um, you guys don't need to sit and watch me do this every single, uh, every single time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through and I'm going to find more recruits that, that may fit our, um, that may fit our team, which really is anybody. Uh, and, um, yeah, I'll come back in at some point, you know, some point in the next few weeks and, and, and we'll see where we stand. Like I said, I, this is going to be, this first episode is probably just going to be up to, the beginning of the season since it's July 4th right now. Um, we'll just play up through the beginning of the season and then I'll call that at uh, episode one. So I'll be back in a little bit and, and we'll take a look and we'll see uh, what we were able to do in terms of generating some interest in our school. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. It is, I don't even know what day it is. It's not up here anymore. Let's go back here. September 18th, 2019. Um, we are dealing with our schedule and it's gone. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I think if we click here, it's just going to advance. Let's take a look at recruiting really quickly. Uh, we have generated some interest. Um, you can see here we have eight or nine players who have some interest in our school. One of them, a three-star recruit, Jim Parquet out of Hawaii. He's the number 31 position prospect in the country. Uh, we are up to fifth on his top 10. Um, we are uh, doing a home visit this week and we are going to actually let's host him as well. Uh, he doesn't want to come. Okay. So we are visiting him and we pitched playing time. Um, hopefully that will boost him up even further. Uh, we also are visiting Riley Thornton and Gottlieb. I don't anticipate that this is going to lead to any of them um, accepting offers, but we'll see. Uh, I figured if I got two of these guys, I could make one of them a shooting guard. They're both like 6'3", 6'4". Thornton's 6'3". Riley is 6'2". And Parquet, I think, is 6'4". Six, six, so... Uh, I could make one of them a shooting guard if I needed to. So we're going to advance a day and see what happens. Okay, so this is what we wanted to see. So we've got our schedule. Our first game is going to be against Bowling Green, uh, UTEP, Samford, Coastal Carolina, North Alabama, North Texas, Texas A&M, Mississippi Valley, Delta, North Dakota, Baylor, and Ohio before we get into our conference play. Um... Da, 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 standings. So if we go to Conference S, you can see who else is in here with us. Hartford, Kansas City, Idaho State, Campbell, Sacramento State, High Point, UC Riverside, Omaha, Morgan State, Norfolk State, Tennessee, Martin, Navy, Eastern Illinois, Army, and New Orleans. So that's Conference S. Conference A will have all of the teams that you are familiar with. Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, Gonzaga, Michigan State, Louisville, Ohio State, Maryland, Florida, Villanova, Syracuse, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Arizona, Xavier, and Texas. So we got a ways to go. Um, so let's go ahead and sim ahead and see if we can land our first recruit. At beat means we got an email. Second beat means we got a second email. So we got five. All right, so let's take a look. So Jim Parquet's decision. Ah, he went to Arizona State. Crap. Ahmad Thornton, that didn't work. John Gottlieb, that didn't work. Damon Riley, he wasn't happy. Shoot. Well, that just stinks because that means we lost out on all of them. So uh, Terrence Miles, he signed with Vanderbilt. Jim Parquet signed with Arizona State. Man, that stinks. All right. So let's go back in here. Let's go to recruits offered. Let's go ahead and revoke scholarships because they no longer have any interest in us. And we got to start over. All right. We can make it work. We can make it work still. Uh, so let's get rid of uh, the committed folk. Let's look at only available. Give it a second to load. All right, so we had a shot there. Didn't work out, so that's fine. So let's go through and... The only issue we're going to run into now, I think, is that I don't think I can... If I visit any of these guys now... Actually, can I, I think I can call them now. Yeah, I think I can. So let's, let's do this. Let's look at a couple of two-star guys. Troy Nixon out of Montana. Uh, JC guy. No, I don't want to go after a JC guy. He has no interest. David Taylor. Jeff Root. Jerry Span, because I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to start looking at some two star guys. I may have shot a little bit too high, but you know, you live, you learn. Uh, Al Thompson, uh, 
Alonzo Britain or Britain. And let's find one more. Leon Emmanuel. All right, so let's now go here. Call list. All right, so these are all the guys we just went after. So let's see if we can generate some information here from some of these guys. Oh, he doesn't want to waste my time. All right. Well, appreciate that. Uh, Jeff Root. What about Jeff Root? Okay. He's not interested. That stinks. Um, Daryl Holloway. Coach, don't bother calling again. All right. All right, so I guess we got to go back to these guys here. So we've got four. Deshaun Foster. Let's go ahead and pitch facilities because that was fairly important to him. Henry Bailey. Academics is all I have here for him. Some of these guys can surprise you, and they can just sign like out of nowhere if you are able to um, sort of land the information. So we'll go playing time. Dan Dillard, it's super high for him, and we can guarantee him a lot of playing time. So maybe that'll work for us. Keith Parker, I offered him a scholarship. Uh, Henry Bailey. Go Keith Parker and offer him to offer him as well. So we offered those three and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, we are back. It is Sunday, November 6th. Um, we are at the red shirt. Uh, stage of recruiting in the preseason and you can see we've generated some interest we haven't been able to lock anybody down yet uh, I do have a couple of uh, of um, scholarship offers out there one to David Taylor who's a 6'6 uh, power forward slash uh, small forward he's got a decent shot uh, Jeff Root who is a pretty Good scorer, both inside and outside. Uh, doesn't do anything else particularly well, but he's a big guy who can score. And then Keith Parker, who is, we are currently 10th on his list. Uh, he's average across the board, but pretty solid inside. So um, I'm hoping that uh, we can lock down one or two of these guys here. We'll see what happens. We're not in the top 10 in anybody's list except for... Um, except for Parker, so I'm not overly optimistic, but we'll see what happens. So if we look at our roster, is there anybody that we want to redshirt? Anybody that's got really high potential, low uh, overall, and is young. So what does our small forward situation look like? I think I might redshirt Trevor and Jelly. Um, just because we've got three upper class shooting guards. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to red shirt and jelly. So we'll keep him. He'll be a red shirt freshman next year. Uh, I don't know how much he was going to play this year at one and a half stars. We've got quite a few two star players uh, right now. You know, and in, in college, you're not going to play with a super deep roster. So he probably wasn't going to get much playing time. So I think we're going to go with that. And it might, it might make sense to. No, we're going to stick with that. So we'll go ahead and advance. couple messages hopefully one of them is somebody telling them that they've decided to come to our school I 
I tend to not mess around much with the practice schedule. Um, you can change. We'll just kind of take a look at it. You can change the type of offense they play, the type of defense they play. Uh, I assume that the offense and defense is set up um, according to the roster that we have. So if we have a team that is um, is going to be, you know, if, if we've got a, a – a, a team that's going to struggle offensively will go to Princeton. If we've got a, you know, maybe a small team, we might do more uh, pressing, you know, that sort of thing. But I, I tend to not change much of this. Let's look at our, our inbox. Okay, so it was just um, scouting reports for Coastal Carolina, Samford, the f four teams that we're going to be playing first. All right, so let's delete those. Anything I need to do here? Let's continue to watch film on these guys, and hopefully one of two things happens soon. Either one of these guys commits to us, or they commit to somebody else, and it frees up the... And it might make sense to... Well, he said back on 10-2 that he has very little interest in coming to our school, but that was 10-2. Jerome Ross, he's pretty good. Um... Let's see if we can get any different information out of him. Because I'd be willing to pull scholarships from other players if I can get some good information. Playing time is very important to Boyce. So that's good to know. Let's see if we can get anything out of Ross here. Come on. What do you have to say about playing time? Talk to me. All right. Uh, okay. Because right now we've got Parker, Root, and Taylor. But if I could come away with Parker, Boyce, and Ross, I mean, that would be better. But I don't... Yeah, we're going to revoke here. Offer here. Revoke here. And offer here. I'm sure that I'm doing it the wrong way, that as you um, revoke offers from people that, that affects something, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so we're going to sim through because we don't have any games scheduled for today. And let's go ahead and sim. Let's, uh, let's, we're going to sim our first game, so once we, get, once we get there, we'll have to go in and take a look at our roster and make sure that the lineup is set the way we want, so... Get that first game out of the way. All right, so our first game is against Bowling Green, Bowling Green State. I don't know if that's a thing. Uh, so we've got rosters. We want to look at depth chart. This is what we want. So this is really cool. I love the way it does this. It allows you to, to move stuff around and set um, the number of minutes they play. You can set based on the actual minutes that you want them to play, or you can um, shift their positions around at various points within the within the, the the time of the game. So if we look at our roster, how is our best player? And he's going to need uh, how and Goff are our two best players. How Goff and Anthony, I guess. It's, so that they're going to play a lot. Goff, How and Anthony are going to play significant minutes. So right now How's playing 32. Anthony's only playing 10 for some reason it has the sophomore in there starting because he's actually rated rebounding 30 29 30 better rebounding Anthony's a better shooter better offensively But Webb is better. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically split the time between split the time basically evenly, I think, between the two of them. So we'll go 20-20 there. Uh, Goff is playing 30 minutes a game. I want him playing more than that. Of 
course, they're 40-minute games. So Howe's playing 32. I don't like this. I want him in there at the end of the half. So if McMaster has to come in, he can play there. Uh, Seek is a pretty decent offensive player. Scoring is low, but he's a good shooter, which I don't really understand. Barkley, the freshman, is going to get the start. Greg Kamauna. Okay, that's fine. McMaster. He's going to play point and shooting guard. Lavin. All right, I'm okay with that. So let's store that lineup and let's get into the game hang on guys I'll be right back So we are going to play this one, I guess, play, quote unquote. We're going to just let it sim through. All right, so human control, 2D gameplay, Bowling Green. It's not supposed to be, I don't think it's Bowling Green State. I think it's just Bowling Green. So you got our starting lineup, Llewellyn Barkley, John Howe, Duan Seek, Carlisle Goff, Calvin Webb for Bowling Green, Kevin Evans, Walter Windelin, Marcus Ward, Ryan Malone, and Adrian Gilchrist. Let's go to tip-off. We'll get started in four seconds. Sorry about that. I am trying to work do this at the same time and let's see so let's set our options we're going to enable auto sub i'm just going to let the game sim pause it all stops no we're not going to pause it all stops we're just going to go to the halftime report and let's speed the game up just a little whoa what happened there all right let's go ahead and play <laughs> Game sounds. I don't think there's any way to. I don't think there's any way to reduce the game sounds. But anyway, we got on the board early here as Llewellyn Barkley scores. Bowling Green up three two. UNH comes right back with a three of their own. Llewellyn Barkley all five points. A two there by Seek puts us up by four. Missed three-pointer for the Wildcats. Seven to five here early on in the first half. About four minutes in, we have a seven to five lead, a nine five lead is Llewellyn, Llewellyn Barkley, three for three shooting, seven points and a rebound here early on. Freshman looking good. 13 to five now. Howe with four rebounds and two assists. 13 to eight is the score here. 13 to 10 now, UNH. Shot missed there. Bowling Green takes over. Looking to tie it with a three. They're not able to. Foul line jumper there by Seek is no good. UNH hanging on here to a 13 to 10 lead. A couple of missed free throws right there. It's been 13 to 10 here for a little while. There we go. A bucket there for the Cats. Anthony scores. 
Another bucket by Anthony, 17 to 12, as Anthony's come in and hit a couple of shots inside. Lead is up to 12 now all of a sudden, 24 to 12. Oh, as Bowling Green hits a three, 24 to 15. 27 to 15, UNH. 29 to 15. Quite a run here for the Wildcats midway through the first half. 14-point UNH lead with 8.50 left to go in the first half. A couple of missed shots there by the Cats. Bowling Green has it again. Back to UNH. Turnover there by the Wildcats. Jumper missed. 31-19 with seven minutes left here in half number one. A lot of passing outside the paint. Turnover and then a missed shot by Bowling Green. Bucket there, I think that was by Howes, had a nice first half. Six points, five rebounds, four assists for the senior. 35-19, UNH with a second chance opportunity there, misses the shot. Four and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Wildcats with a 16-point lead. Three-pointer there by Pebbles gives the Cats a 38-19 lead. Bowling Green hits a couple free throws. 17-point UNH lead with three and a half left to go. Bowling Green looking to get the lead down to around 10 by the end of the first half if they can. UNH up 17 right now. Things looking good for the Cats. Bowling Green hits a jumper there to get it within 15. Missed shot under two minutes left in half number one. Two free throws made there by Anthony. Puts UNH back up 17. Bowling Green comes back with a bucket. Missed three-pointer by the Wildcats. We're under a minute here in the first half. Turnover by UNH. Passing around the paint, baseline jumper by Lavin is no good. And that will do it for the first half. So if we look at the first half stats, starting with Bowling Green, they are led by Evans, who had seven points on two of seven shooting. Malone, five points, or four points, five rebounds. Gilchrist, four points, five rebounds. Windlin, three points and three assists. Duncan with four and four off the bench. Hill with three. Hopkins with a bucket for the Wildcats. Webb and Howe each had eight. Howe was a plus 16. Eight points, five rebounds, four assists for the senior John Howe. Webb, eight points, two rebounds. Llewellyn Barkley, seven points and only eight minutes in that first half for the freshman. Seek had two points and Goff did not score in the first half off the bench. Anthony with six points. Two rebounds, two assists in 10 minutes. Lavin, two points, five rebounds, two assists. McMaster, four points. Pebbles had a three-pointer. Pride hit a couple of free throws. So Jeff Howe looking really, really nice in this one. Eight points, five rebounds, four assists, two blocks, and a steal in the first half. So let's get to the second half. Bowling Green will have it first. They miss their first shot. UNH turns it over. Bowling Green scores there. Looks like some full court pressure by Bowling Green. UNH with another turnover. And a three-point play by Bowling Green. Gets them within 10. A couple of missed free throws, but UNH gets the rebound and hits a three there by Howe to put UNH back up by 13. Bowling Green hits a shot. Brings them within 10 now. Another missed shot by the Wildcats. And they come back and they convert down at the other end to 12-point UNH lead just underway in the second half. Missed there. One out of two at the line for Lavin. In the paint, Webb goes, or excuse me, that was Seek went up with that one. UNH with a 12-point lead here. Down to 10 at 50 to 40. Excuse me, I have to sneeze. Excuse me, sorry about that. It's an eight-point game. 
UNH had a 19-point lead in this one at one point. It's down to eight. Two, missed, two more missed free throws by the Wildcats. Bowling Green scores again, and it's down to six. Another turnover, and it's down to four. Two points there for the Cats. Gives them a six-point lead with 13 minutes left. It's turned into quite a ball game here in Bowling Green. UNH had a 19-point first-half lead. It's down to four here now. Bowling Green looking to cut it to two or one with a three. Twelve and a half left to go in this one. UNH has the ball looking to extend their lead. They are able to get a bucket there. They're now up six. Missed three-pointer by Bowling Green. UNH has it again. And missed the three-point opportunity, but they were able to score and push their lead back up to eight. Two made free throws by Bowling Green. UNH gets a bucket in the paint to go back up by eight. They get the ball back. Hit a couple of free throws, put them back up to 10. We're midway through the second half. UNH with an eight-point lead, looking to win their first game of the season. Bowling Green looking to get back into this one. They're trail by six. They were down by as many as 19. There's a bucket by McMaster to put UNH back up by eight, and another bucket to put him back up by 10. Bowling Green's gotten back into this one within four a couple of times, but each time UNH is able to push that lead back up to double digits. It's back down to six here. Missed foul line jumper. Six-point game with seven and a half minutes left. Bowling Green back within four again. Turnover by UNH, and it's down to a one-point game as Evans hits a three-pointer. Bowling Green looking to take the lead on this possession, and they're able to. They're now up by one with six minutes left. Another missed shot by the Wildcats. Another missed shot by Bowling Green. Couple of free throws. UNH goes up by two. Bowling Green hits a three to go back up by one. What a good game here to start off the season. UNH trails by one. One out of two at the line for Bowling Green. They're up by two. Missed shot by the Wildcats. Missed shot by Bowling Green, but they get the offensive rebound. They're up by four now with four minutes left in this one. UNH had a 19-point lead in this game. They now trail by four with four minutes left. Missed shot, and Bowling Green comes down with it. UNH has it now. Looking to get cut into this four-point lead. They get it to two. With three minutes left, Bowling Green is able to score right away, though, to extend that lead back to four. One out of two at the line. Bowling Green has extended their lead to seven, and UNH is running out of time here. They were up by 19 points in the first half. They now trail this one 76-71. We're under two minutes left in the ball game. Bowling Green hits a three, and they're up eight, and that will just about do it, I think. Six-point game with a minute left. UNH looking for a turnover. They get the ball back, miss a three, get an offensive rebound, get a bucket there. They're now down by four with 30 seconds left. They need to foul here. This Bowling Green just runs the clock out. Couple of free throws. And that will do it. UNH falls 79 to 77 to Bowling Green in the first game of the year. UNH outscore gives up 52 points in the second half, leading the way for Bowling Green is Evans. He had 19 points. Windlin with 12 points, 8 assists. Gilchrist, 7 points, 6 rebounds. Malone had 4 points and 7 rebounds. Ward did not score off the bench. Duncan with 19 points in 26 minutes. Hopkins had 4 points, 7 rebounds. Evans hit a 3-pointer. Hill had 6 points. Depina had five, Dickerson and Samick played but did not score. For the Wildcats, Howe led the way, 15 points, 11 rebounds, five assists. Barkley with nine, Webb and Seek each with eight. Seek added seven rebounds. Goff, six points, four rebounds, three assists off the bench. Anthony with 12 points and four rebounds. McMaster with eight. Pebbles with three. Lavin, or with six. Lavin with three. Pride with two. And UNH drops two, oh, and one on the season. 
So that's going to do it for this episode. So um, when we come back, it'll probably be the end of the regular season. We'll go back and we'll take a look at recruiting, see if I was able to make any headway there. We'll recap the team. We'll do postseason tournament, hopefully uh, the conference postseason tournament. We'll do our uh, hopefully postseason tournament, and then we will do the off season. So hope you guys liked it. As always, leave a like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. And until we talk again, everybody take care. Bye-bye now.